Dear Oliver Ragnar Grimsson, Chairman of the Arctic Circle Assembly and former President of Iceland, dear guests and dear friends, it's a real pleasure to be with you here today in person and finally be able to meet, exchange our views and talk about the important challenges and issues that we are faced with here in the Arctic. It is indeed a calm and sunny day here in Reykjavik, but we who live in the high north, we face storm clouds on the horizon because the Arctic as we know it is changing fast. It may become unrecognizable in few decades if we do not act. Indeed, the entire planet is changing due to climate change and is paying the price of our past action. But the Arctic is where we can see this change most clearly. It is here that the warning signals are even loudest. And we see this change, we see this change here in Iceland in shrinking glaciers, sea ice, we see it around the Arctic in shrinking permafrost. We see it in heat records being beaten north of the Arctic Circle. We see it in unprecedented fires in the tundra and the great boreal forests in the north. And what is especially worrying is that some of these changes can lead to a vicious climate cycle. Less ice cover means less reflection of solar energy. The melting of permafrost releases methane a potent greenhouse gas. We need to halt catastrophic climate change before we reach dangerous tipping points for the climate. And this is the clear message of science. This is the clear message of the Arctic. And I think we can all agree here on the fact that today's scientific knowledge is certain on this front. Last week, three scientists, Siukuro Manape, Klaus Hasselmann, and Giorgio Parisi were awarded the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physics for their groundbreaking work on building reliable computer models of the Earth's climate that can actually predict the impact of global warming. And their research show how the climate responds in the long term to rising greenhouse gas emissions and has helped us understand the impact of global warming. It adds to the decisive scientific evidence that tells us that the current trend of climate change is a planetary emergency. Last August's IPCC report told us very clearly that no region in the world is immune to the changes happening to the Earth's climate system. And obviously, this is a gloomy beginning of a speech. And obviously, the worst climate scenarios presented by science are gloomy indeed. But is there hope for the future? Yes, there is. Because human action is responsible for the current trend and human action can halt this trend. I am convinced that technology and innovation can help us in the fight against climate change. I am also convinced that the cost of green solutions to a world catastrophe is lower than we often think and most certainly much less than the cost of inaction. And I think also, because I am an optimist, that we can learn a lot from the last 18 months where the world has been engulfed by the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences. And the pandemic has really shown us how taking bold actions based on science has worked and mitigated the effects of the pandemic and also how not taking these actions can have dire consequences. There are many lessons to be learned from those past 18 months. Lessons that can help us make better and wiser decisions today in order to help stave off future crises. For example, the lessons of importance of international cooperation, of taking scientific facts and findings seriously, of reducing inequalities in societies, and of having the courage to make bold decisions for transformative change. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arctic Circle Assembly has become a central forum for a joint reflection on the state of the Arctic, an open democratic venue, as Olaf Ragnar Grimson mentioned here earlier, a venue for a constructive dialogue between the diverse people that make up this region and between the people of the Arctic and the rest of the world, because the Arctic is not the private matter of us who live here. 
And last uh, year, or this year actually, 2021, the Icelandic government decided to support the funding of a non-governmental organization, the foundation of Olavur Ragnar Grimsson, which will be the home of the Arctic Circle, but also a hub for a dynamic dialogue, research, and innovation when it comes to the Arctic and climate. This shows the importance of the Arctic for all of us living here in Iceland and the importance of a constructive dialogue on the Arctic. Last May, Iceland successfully concluded its two-year chairmanship of the Arctic Council, a tenure certainly made more challenging by the reality of COVID-19. The theme of our chairmanship, together towards a sustainable Arctic, reflects Iceland's commitment to the principle of sustainable development and our belief in the needs for close cooperation in the region and beyond. Iceland has aimed to strengthen the Arctic Council as the main intergovernmental forum on Arctic affairs, and our focus has been on green solutions in the area, the people and the communities of the Arctic, and the Arctic marine environments. And under Iceland's chairmanship, the Arctic Council has, for the first time, adopted a 10-year strategic plan to help guide the Council's work, aiming to improve transparency and accountability. And this is a very important step to a long-term vision and commitment to sustainable development, benefiting the people, wildlife and habitats of the Arctic region. Our goal must also be to continue to keep the Arctic as a low tension area and an area of exemplary international cooperation. The Arctic is really no place for increased armaments and military action. We need to bridge our differences and solve our problems by dialogue, conversation and cooperation. And this is why we are all here in the Arctic Circle Assembly, because here we can actually meet and understand each other better and help to build a sustainable future here in the high north. And I also would like to mention, because I have made a personal commitment, always when I have the chance of speaking to a lot of people like you here, to talk a little bit about gender equality. Because actually, Iceland put a strong emphasis on gender equality in its chairmanship in the Arctic Council. And I think the importance of diversity, gender equality and parity in our decision-making bodies and in our societies and communities at large cannot be overemphasized because it matters that we are all at the table where we make the decisions because decisions affect the genders differently and decisions affect different groups of people differently. And this we must always take into consideration into our plans and actions. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Climate Change Conference COP26 is right around the corner, and the Glasgow COP has been called the most important climate conference since the historic Paris meeting in 2015. And I think this is no exaggeration. We need COP26 to be a success for the future of all of us. And the meeting is of special importance to the Arctic region, because the unprecedented environmental change taking place in the Arctic and other areas around the globe requires immediate action. The stakes are high, but as I said earlier, we should not lose hope. Green solutions come with a price tag, but they also bring new jobs, new opportunities, and new benefits. Climate action can actually drive economic, social, and development objectives. Think tanks around the world, such as the new climate economy, have shown that the green transformation of our economy is both complementary to and essential for economic development. Green transformation can, in fact, be the growth story of the 21st century. And I think we already have the tools and the knowledge necessary to make the change we need. Increased support for green innovation will help us to reach the extra mile. And governments around the globe must be bold to bring on more ambitious climate measures. The Arctic nations must have the vision and courage to act fast and decisively and to lead by example. We do not have the luxury of time to wait for others to act. We must have the courage to lead 
and we must act together for the sake of our people, for the sake of our Arctic, and for the sake of future generations. Thank you.